Hello, very good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yes. So today we are again back uh, with our session on text technology with Charcha Charcha for text. So today we are going to discuss on one of the uh, hot topic or I'm say a burning issue of e learning. We have Neeraj, our founder and me, and Neeraj was the lead analyst on the whole e tech thing. Uh, so Neeraj, when we start, uh, the first question is. What is this invoicing in brief? Then we'll go in detail. But what is this the concept of invoicing? Basically, uh, why invoicing and why to answer first? This, the biggest challenge against the industry is reconciling the data between the buyer and the seller. So that is the biggest challenge. Because everybody does the data entry into their own ERP or into own their solution in a different way. And that creates a lot of challenges, a lot of uh, data entry mistakes, a lot of other issues. Correct. And reconciling is a challenge. Now, I can write a book on what are the data issues onto it, and still it would be less to explain the type of different data issues we've seen. Now, government is also facing a challenge that when they are seeing the reconciliation that is happening into the systems. The amount of the tax credit that has been taken compared to the two way invoices existing, the matching is not happening. And there was a kind of a very clear uh, interest that how can we help solve this particular problem. Now, the best way to do it between two ERPs is if I am issuing invoice in a standard format and I receive the same invoice in a standard format, which are easily consumable into my ERPs. Then it makes life very easy for both. So this was the concept, and then the matching challenges would not occur, occur because the data entry which is done will be digitally transmitted to the other party, and other party will consume that data digitally. So there will be no data entry required onto those amount of bills, and that was the inaccuracies into the system will go. This was the concept because of which in versing. Came into play and e invoicing is required into the country. That is okay. Uh, so, Vidal, can you expect that because of what we have explained, there will not be any equation of let's say a fake invoices being generated, there are a lot of scams which are going on. Maybe e invoicing can be a help to curb that practice? Yes, to a certain extent, yes, I would say. How? The initiative taken by government this time. It's like streamlining of the invoices, the schema which a supplier uploads into the portal, yeah. and the schema which is received by the buyer will supposed to be the same. How ERPs and the legacy systems they will make changes as per the schema schemas provided by the government and approved by the GST council. That means that any invoice issued by the supplier. And any invoice received by the buyer would be able to read those invoices quite easily. Also, there is a requirement from the government that whatever invoice is initiated from the ERM system has to be brought to, has to be generated an IRN on top of. So IRN is nothing but a hash which will be validated, verified, and then digitally signed and given the copy back to the supplier and the buyer. This will, to a certain extent, let's see how and what extent it goes to eliminate the fake invoicing. But yes, of course, it will play a major role in eliminating the fake invoices that is happening. Yeah. Yes. Yes. A simple example, if I take, is I issue 10 invoices to you. I upload 5 invoices onto the government network, and other 5 I don't even upload, and I only pay taxes for 5. When you are doing your reconciliation, the challenge would be. That you only see five words and you keep on following it up with me for the other five words. So that is a major challenge which is happening. Now, once everybody is required to upload the invoices onto the GST network as they issued through the IRP system and generating a hash, and GST network digitally signing that invoice and sending the copy to both of them and auto populating it into an actual one and actual two. So this will make it very easy that the invoice which has been uploaded will remain onto the system and there will be a trace of it and the counterparty gets it. Now you will still need to reconcile it with the goods that we have received or we still need to reconcile it with the services that we received. That 
exercise will reconciliation exercise will remain. But the data entry mistakes of how the invoice has been data entered by one party and received by the other party will be drastically reduced. That is the challenge. Okay. Uh, one question that me, I was uh, posed that when let's say I am using X ERP system and you are using Y ERP system, will there be a standard format of issuing an invoice or what will be the change on the way the business has been functioning and what is this key is going to help us on? Theoretically, if you issue an invoice to me and you are using X ERP and I am using a Y ERP, government has published, the GST council has published a standardized schema hmm. which both of us need to follow for our invoicing mechanism. The data fields have been clearly defined. It has been enough research and then the conclusion has come in. Now, there are mandatory fields and non-mandatory fields into it. So standard is the mandatory field part. An uh, invoice issued by X person and received by a Y person should be easily consumable into a theoretical. Practically, there are more than 5,000 different invoicing systems which are there in the country. And which, whether each invoicing system will be able to adapt this schema change, will be able to make the changes into the invoicing methodology <coughs> and really adapt it over a period of time, that's going to be a major challenge on how successful or unsuccessful this entire exercise would be. So that is a kind of a uh, challenge it is going to face. The E part is the digital footprint or digitally transmitting the invoice and digitally <coughs> It, wherein you remove the actual requirement of a data entry and will that get 100% removed because yes for the mandatory field yes but if you take the typical ERPs will they be able to consume this data automatically more I talk to different clients more challenges are being uh, envisaged and that's a challenge that the industry will have to pass through. okay so uh, right now I am issuing the invoice from my ERP uh, I read something that that format and uh, there would not be any great change. The change is going to come on the schema part where I have to, it's like I have to do two exercises. Normal if I'm that typical accountant mindset, I have to send that physical invoice because of our practices between both the industries, both the companies. Then we run parallel. And this E part will run parallelly on the other side. Is this understanding? Yeah, that yeah. is the clear understanding. Because again, if I am sending some goods from A person to Y person, along with the goods, there will be definite requirement to send the invoice copy and the yeah. EMA bill will have to go with it. So that practice is going to go. For a service, it's even a digital invoice copy also will go. So that is going to remain. And this E invoicing is specifically for matching of the GST credit, which will happen. And that should ease up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the question, one more question that uh, people are having, like when the invoices are being moved from, let's say, the government GST portal, which has been signed, and then we'll come to that later. Uh, what are the chances that invoice issued by me to you through GST and portal is being captured by somewhere in between, and there are certain changes being made? Is it possible? Ah, uh, no, that would be possible. There are two parts of the e invoicing. So there is a myth in the uh, industry that I would like to highlight. The myth is that a uh, taxpayer would need to go to the central portal and generate an invoice. Thing. No, it is it is not that. Uh, basically, there are two parts of e invoicing. One is generating invoices through the ERPs. Correct. That is the first part and sending those invoice details to the government. Now, we would take it that way. Whatever data which taxpayers are currently uploading to the government portal, even the e-invoices that will be reported to the generation, for the generation of the IRN and hence the government portal will behave in the same way. So, likewise, the taxpayers' data is secure currently. The same way the invoicing data will also be secure. Okay. Yeah. And so then, yes. Yeah. If I add to what Viral says, the process will be ERP generates a 
invoice. Here we generate sir, I will put it across a document. I will yep. call it as an invoice. We generate a document. That document will have three unique things. Means invoice number, the GST and ID, and the year. A combination of it will convert into a hash. That hash will be uploaded to a new uh, body which is called an IRP system. The IRP system will first verify that that invoice is not being uh, re-uploaded into the same system and then it will pass on that information to the GSTN system. GSTN system will do a due duplication of that invoice. So if it is duplicated then again it will be rejected. If not, the invoice will be accepted into the GSTN portal and a digitally signed invoice copy along with the QR code will pass back to the buyer and the seller. And the existence of this QR code will be an interesting phenomenon that if we print or digitally embed the QR code on the invoice, I feel GSTN system in future will come up with a system by, the, by scanning that invoice, you will be able to verify the existence of that invoice on, on the GSTN portal. So this will actually improve the collective information available to all of us and this will improve the fraudulent transactions that are appearing into the industry. Yeah. To add to this point, I would like to add, government has also embedded uh, certain accounting applications. Yes, uh, face from signal import is part of one. And that too is also destined to take care of such an invoicing system so that the fake invoicing the topic which we were talking about uh, Mm -hmm. That will also be taken care of and hence small taxpayers who are not actually using large ERPs will be able to utilize those accounting softwares and the invoicing will be very much possible through it or face would be on top of it and it would also allow taxpayers to generate the invoice. The interesting part that face had an invoicing built into it from day one. So yes. an invoice generated from a face application was digitally possible to consume by a other uh, face yes. application. So this invoicing facility into face was available from yeah. day one. So that was a kind of uh, let me talk to face because I have a certain question yeah. on face. Uh, because and again go back to the earlier question, when you say that there will not be any change of data because nothing can be hacked by someone. So should we assume that is this something blockchain which is being implemented? Because see when people hear about hash, they link it with blockchain. So what is this hash and is it the blockchain which GST is promoting? How uh, okay. uh, with whatever information that is available to us, I don't see that blockchain is being used at the back end for creation, maintenance, or indexing of the hash. Right. But using a hash is technically a very efficient way of indexing a particular uh, number and then it is very easy to identify or scan through that and identify the duplicate of it. So that is why a hash mechanism being used. So this has nothing to, as far as I know, this has nothing to do with blockchain okay. in terms of this application. Yeah. To uh, non-technical uh, taxpayers out there, hash is nothing but an encryption decryption methodology that government has uh, put in place so that uh, whatever data the invoice, e invoice data that has been sent that has been sent to the IRB or the GST portal is well encrypted, and they would themselves decrypt from there and verify and duplicate check the invoice, yeah. encrypt again and send it back to the taxpayers. Yeah. So hashing is nothing but it's an encrypted decryption methodology to preserve the actual data. Uh, on a, on a lighter side, if government is going to charge us for generating because everything will go to their system, will there be any charge on this by GSM? I think nobody has mentioned any charge yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> that is, I don't see they would be charging. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, let me ask a couple of more things here. Uh, so, as I understood, there are two aspects where uh, IRN can be generated. Let's say we take an example of some here, which is capable of on their own to generate an IRN. So that is option number one. And there is option number two that you go to the government system and generate an IRN. So what are these two options and how industry in your opinion will work in either option one or option two or it is still doing? If I on a lighter note tell what the industry <laughs> wants to say, we don't want to do anything, let government do. Everything. Everything. So it is an intermediary or a government or a GST, they should do everything, industry should not be doing 
Correct. Anything because they have not even come out of the 1718 audits yet, and they are having challenges onto multiple these aspects. So it's up to how they will cope with. It. So that is one point. But uh, logically, there will be certain ERPs who will incorporate this into that mechanism, and government would be providing <laughs> multiple different utilities by which they can. Uh, Use or generate the IRN numbers, so that also would be available. And uh, offline utilities, the standalone utilities, Correct. that would be available. A mobile app, most probably would be available. So for the small taxpayers, there will be a lot of facilities that would be available. And the interesting concept is because we were going through. I was in Mumbai last two days, and we were going through this presentation with multiple large corporates, and they are going to face a Challenge into the whole process because changing the systems at the back end with the amount of regulatory requirements that is that is very very difficult. Yes. So a lot of these changes will have to be incorporated at our end as a GSP and facilitate the taxpayers to uh, yeah. do this seamlessly. So that is the kind of thought process that we have heard. Yeah. Uh, we have a question here from uh, one of the attendees. Will yeah. the invoicing make compliance more complicated and difficult? I suppose yes, this would be for you. Uh, see, the pain would be there to start with. Let me be very honest. Till the system streamlined, till the automation is complete and done. So initially, the pain would be there. Post automation and post streamlining of the systems, the system definitely would be much easier to use. It will force us to be more organized. And that is a definite requirement into the Indian contact that all of us needs to be much more organized in our accounting practices, in our data practices, and in our compliance practices. So that is required. So yes, it will enforce that particular part. But yes, over a period of time, it will become easy. Okay. Let's uh, say I generate an invoice from my accounting system. Right now, it's very, I would say, a solid, rock solid kind of system that we are using. Now, since I have one more unique number called IRN, I will have to preserve that number ideally in the same accounting system. Yes, and the so QR code. Tag the QR code. QR code. Yes. And probably, as we discussed earlier, that even even the number is going to continue. The whole event will continue. Yes. So, on one invoice, I have my own invoice number, then the IRN, and then the event. So I will have to maintain everything and keep my accounting system right now is not supporting it. That will be a big mess for the industry. How are we going to maintain all this? So uh, if I take large corporates, large institutions, financial institutions, they will not be able to make these changes into back into their accounting system because they do not have a single accounting system. They have, that. They have an invoice system, they have a billing system. They have sales. sales, they have something else for the account payables, so they have different systems for them. So taking this back information in. So they will have to go towards a data warehouse concept wherein all the basic information resides into a single data warehouse. Or it can be into a, if they are using the ASP GSP services, this particular system would be there into the ASP GSP part and accordingly they will have to take care of it. But these are challenging. I mean, I would have met about nine different clients in two days, and every client's pain point is different. Every client's methodology will be different, so it's going to be challenging. But uh, over a period of time, the way we are feel, uh, seeing the changes into the government ecosystem and the mindset, it's right time for the large corporates to start thinking of a compliance mechanism which is more robust, more uh, better. And not rely only on the ERP system to uh, take care of everything. Two things there. I heard you a couple of uh, months back in one of the seminar where you said uh, the readiness on the GST and part was far better for the overall GST ecosystem as compared to industry. Now I think uh, since e invoicing is going to be let's say initially a voluntary and then probably one day become mandatory, does industry is seeming to be ready? Have they learned out of their past experience or still the story is safe? I'll put it across uh, when we were talking about the GST implementation back in 2016 17, where the first six months of yep. 2017 till July. 
the industry was more open and willing to make the changes quickly and adapt things by which they become compliant. Currently, they are still into the pain of reconciliation. They are still into the pain of 2017-18 audit uh, filings and exhausted mentally. They are not even completely aware of what changes they will have to make it and not at all ready. So it's kind of uh, waking them up from the slumber and requesting them please open up and let's start preparing. At least whenever the implementation becomes mandatory. But if we start today, we need three months, six months time, we will be there. Talking from the taxpayer's perspective, adding to Leland's point, I believe if a parallel system is to be run by a taxpayer, based on the current GSTR1, which they have to file on a daily basis, on a monthly basis. Second is new simplified returns coming up. So again, that two things will run parallel. Third is now e invoicing coming into picture. If a taxpayer has to get compliant with the e invoicing as well as simplified returns, and on side by side, he has to run his daily business, follow the compliance with respect to the current GSTR1 filing. I think it's going to be a bit tedious for them also. But yes, if eventually they have to come across, yes, yes they will have to. So make the things clear. I'll just share one incident that I had shared at a forum in a meeting. That uh, when I started my business career, I'm talking about 30 plus years back. Uh, from morning 11 to 2 used to be our banking time. So half the time we would be in a bank and we would select office premises which is near. very near to our bank because we had to go deposit our checks and that is that. And I don't remember in last 5 to 7 years or maybe 10 years when I have visited my bank. So that is a reality. It has been completely automated. The process has been streamlined and automated. A similar exercise, instead of compliance as a burden, if the industry starts taking it compliance as a way of life, that I have generated an invoice, I will upload it to the IRP system or the EBB system or GSK, then things become very simple. If the counterparty invoice is received, I just accept it, put it on hold or whatever I need to do. It will become very simple. So it's a mindset that needs to change at that particular level. And GSTN portal still provides a facility that once you upload a data, you can make the corrections, you can make the edits before you file return. So it's not that if you upload daily onto it, then you have a challenge of not being able to do that. So it's just a way of Thinking that needs to be changed. I agree. If, if we follow our routine, everything would be healthy. Similar ways, we follow so, our routine. So. Yeah. Uh, now, this is very, very tricky. I was wondering should I ask or not. But you first commented that the bogus invoices, fake invoices will go away. The eco part, which is the major burden that we have, will likely to be go away. Then, what do you see a role of GSP in the new ecosystem? Do we need a GSP? Yes, you need a GSP because the speed at which the changes are coming in, the backend systems will never be able to uh, make it. And the backend systems are actually made to prevent the fraud that happens at the organization. So I'll give a simple example. I raise an invoice and tomorrow I change it or I make a payment to somebody and tomorrow I add it. The backend systems are made that this type of challenges are prevented and enough maker checker concept is put in place. That same maker checker privileges and concepts and the security that has been implemented restricts from a faster, quicker, and a better compliance. So that is where the major challenge is coming in. So you need a system and I'll put it across the GSP system. I'll put it across, it's not going to be just a GSP system, it is going to be more of a compliance ecosystem. And the limitations of the existing invoicing system or the ERP system will have to be complemented by the compliance system, which will help a better compliance. Now, just imagine one day when we have this invoicing and actual one and actual component to play. Do you see that people will rely on? The GST data more than their accounting system. Yes, 
because uh, I will tell you very clearly that a lot of large corporates have said that why could we not have our complete sales data from your system into a single thing? My PAN level sales data with each classification is available only. My ISCAP level data is available only. I would be able to do my analysis much much quicker. better and much much quicker. And that is something which is much better. And uh, they would prefer to do that. So this is actually going to convert into a better regulatory mechanism not only for the regulators but also for the industry over a period of time but that two years three years of pain is something which still will have to go through yeah. so we have a question sure. will the invoice create new types of reconciliation challenges because some companies will do voluntary some may not yes exactly because the smaller taxpayers would be out of it you do not know what is going to be the limit less than 1.5 crore less than 5 crore less than 250 crore we don't know we have heard just numbers and uh, definitely uh, it will raise new challenges but it will clearly distinguish okay? higher number of tax credit from the larger consumers will get it easily the smaller number will become a problem so that a new reconciliation challenge is going to come so correlating your question is with the importance of GSP coming into the picture hmm. if a uh, if this is voluntary based, that means if you are following the compliance, I'm not following the compliance, the reconciliation challenges which are existing currently will still remain as it is until and unless it is finalized by the government. And GSPs will still be needed so that the better reconciliation happens, better automation happens at their place, yep. their process will remain less time consuming. So there is no way out apart from uh, using an ASP or GSP provider mm -hmm. if such a situation arises. So I and Viral were discussing in the morning a very interesting concept. And being a chartered accountant, you know, would know from the accounting practice that so many clients ask us, let's say, okay, my customer has issued 10 invoices, but into ERP, because it's a cash payment, I have only made a single entry. Now, give us a reconciliation mechanism by which this entry, 10 entries can be. Knocked off okay, against a single single. Single. Now, how do you see that that can be automated? No system in the world can automate it. It has to be a manual reconciliation part which is going to come into it. Yeah. So these are the types of challenges which are going to be there and reconciliation is going to remain. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. Signet has developed its own accounting software. And uh, there are very interesting features like let's say you can import uh, invoice from one party to another party in the same accounting system uh, phase. So, will as uh, you have already highlighted that invoicing will be is already built. Mechanism. The invoicing mechanism is already built into it, but we will also have to follow the government prescribed invoicing mechanism by which we will have to generate the hash, we will have to generate the JSON, upload it onto the IRP system, yeah. and go, let it go to the GST and receive it back and store the hash and the IR number and the kind of uh, QR code into the system and print it. So easily doable, yeah. already planned for it and that will happen. So will you fall into a basket I which option one where the IRN can be generated by and validated on the GSTM system or you will go for phase or option two where you will not generate a hash or IRN and everything will be done on the GST. It will be option one. It will be option one. And for a when you're layman like me, what is the advantage of or disadvantage of choosing option? See, it seems that option one is maybe very easy to operate. Uh, I would put it as two things: easy to operate. Mm -hmm. I am in control of what I am generating, and second thing is less load onto the IRP system, less load on the GSTN system. So things becomes faster and quicker for me. Yes. <coughs> And uh, you know, this accounting system is right now a desktop application. It will come with the web application. So will it pose any challenges? Because the target audience was on a different mode. But how? Because this invoicing will happen on an online real time device. So, how are we going to cope up on phase with this invoicing real time generation? Okay. So, when we talk about real time generation, there are a set of APIs that we will go into. Okay. So, whether I am using a desktop application or whether I am using a web application. 
if at all I have an internet connected with me, correct. The online generation of IR or whatever posting of invoices to the government portal, that becomes easier. Correct. So I would say that for small taxpayers, yes, the desktop application is a boom, but for the bigger taxpayers who would be actually using Face as an online application and also using Signet GSP portal, I suppose it would be a win-win situation for them. Because so will you, would will be you provide an integration between Face, a Signet GSP, which is connected with GSTM? That would be a right thing to do. And that is already in the process. process. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Right now, I understand that this IERP concept, as initially government has given this job to NIC. Suppose, theoretically, let's say government comes up with a open, maybe a maybe open some invite to people, then would Signet be interested to become one of the IERP? Definitely, because uh, if it is again open like the GSPs, and government has very clearly stated that yeah, they have started with one IRP and there will be more. Oh. So that will help the entire ecosystem much more. They will handle the taxpayers much more. That if one IRP is not working, they can shift to the another IRP or kind of support, and that would be much better. So yes, and Signet has the infrastructure, the capabilities, and the expertise to uh, work on such kind of system. So why not? Yeah. So phase can be like say a uh, GSTM approved accounting system. Which is connected so called with the IRP, Signet being an IRP, and Signet being a GSP. All this thing can help people to do their accounting a bit faster and easier. Yes, in certain cases, the milliseconds of the time, yeah. or even a one second or a two second delay in the whole process also matters. So, if I take uh, uh, RF, it's the cement industry, if they have to wait for the RMC yes. plants even for one minute, Delay happens into the invoice generation, it's a problem for them because it has to be used within 45 minutes. Yes. So, those type of things, whatever milliseconds of uh, yes, save. save is actually a very beneficial to the industry. Yeah. We have a question. Okay. Will there be a separate invoice formats for traders, medical shops, and contractors? Uh, the current schema that has been generated is uniform for everybody. The mandatory field for a B2B invoice has to be followed by everybody and it would not be separate to it. I think you are in a better position to answer that. Yes, so there are set of uh, there are set of mandatory and non-mandatory fields in the schema that has been defined. So basis the need of generating the invoice. Let's say if you are generating an export related invoice. Generating an invoice to an SEZ. Hmm. There are fields which are defined into this schema, which will be self explanatory to the other person receiving it, to the GST portal who would be actually decrypting it, and to the IRP portal who would be actually hashing the invoice. And hence, this would be in a more streamlined way. Hence, if we talk about it, there would be a different need for the contractors and subcontractors. It all depends upon the type of transaction they are doing, the type of business they are into. And the type of invoice they are generating. Yeah. So this is where we are. Yeah. So this this looks really good that uh, invoicing is coming up. Uh, though voluntary, but Signet looks very ready on the whole as a concept. And uh, wish you all the best for the new. Thank you so much. And it's a new journey, a faster journey. journey, and let's see how the industry reacts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. Thanks everyone.